kinds of cool stuff coming up. We have the Andy Wood interview, this triple threat extravaganza of electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and mandolin. And it's like two, two plus hours, almost three hours of stuff. And because Andy is such an incredibly facile multi-instrumentalist, <laughs> We came up with this idea of recording bluegrass standards, basic versions of bluegrass standards that someone could learn from, but doing the same tune on both mandolin and guitar. Which we both thought was really cool because the flat picking technique being kind of the gateway to both of these instruments. You go into Guitar Center or wherever, the pawn shop, right, and you see the mando hanging and you're like, uh, yeah, why, you know, why would I buy that? Well, You've thought about it, I thought about it, I have one actually. It just it sits in the corner most of the time, but if I had a more insight as to what to do with it, like what stuff to play, I might pick it up more often, and that was the genesis of this idea. So we did the same, more or less the same tunes, a handful of them, with his arrangements. They're not intended necessarily to be identical because the instruments aren't identical, the mechanics are different principally because, uh, well, one of the reasons, obviously, the dual courses of the strings, but the other thing is because of the tuning. The, the fourth tuning on guitar means there's more cross-picking on guitar, ironically, than there is on mandolin, even though you would think of uh, like the you know, hardcore bluegrass mandolin, right? But there's, some of these things are actually harder to do on guitar because you have more one note per string uh, sequences that need to happen. So the arrangements are not exactly identical. It's more like how would you take this standard tune and translate it to the other instrument in a way that would be kind of natural for that instrument to play. And, and we're going to include, we're going to take these renditions with the slow motion camera in both cases and package them up with the tablature and include them as part of the interview. If you've watched any of the clips that we've put up about Andy's interview so far, you may notice that they appear to be from two different interviews. That's because they are. I actually got back on a plane and went back to Knoxville, Tennessee to do this second round after we hatched the dual Mando guitar concept. I'm just trying to keep that role going. And the second interview that we did, we ended up um, touching upon a bunch of cool mechanical topics that go beyond just the standards, like it's doing it. So it was a great thing to actually do again because a lot of times these interviews, you, you head down there once, and then you're sitting on the plane and you're thinking, oh wait, you know, we could have we could have done this or I should have done that because the conversation itself becomes the catalyst for more things that you want to ask. We did this with Carl Miner. We went back a right. second time to meet Carl because you know more. You, like years later, especially, you learn more and you can ask better questions and really get to the heart of some of these technical ideas. And that's kind of what we're really trying to do here. So the Andy Wood thing is a great example of that. After Andy, we have the absolutely spellbinding dual guitar attack of, can you have a spellbinding attack? I don't know, but it's definitely spellbinding. Struns and Farrah. <laughs> since the late 70s, early 80s. It's flamenco inspired, it's really beautiful stuff. This is the first time we've ever done a two magnet interview. So you get two hand close-ups happening simultaneously and you put them side by side like this with some of these beautiful tunes these guys write and it's absolutely mesmerizing. The, the differing mechanics, that they have very different approaches. And they, they learned, as many of these greats did in the era before the intertubes and uh, before the, even before the wave of instructional things that we had in the 80s on VHS tape, it's amazing that people got this far figuring out this stuff. It's almost like magic. So that interview's coming up and it's, it's really a great blend of the technical plus the musical. After that, we also have Lori Schiff from Juilliard who's gonna talk to us about the Alexander Technique, which is a body mechanics system for more relaxed, natural playing, musical, musical body, full body mechanics. This is actually hands-on practical. We actually go down to Lori's studio. It's amazing how quickly you can feel the difference with very simple shifts 
in your posture, simple shifts in terms of where the weight is sitting. And I didn't really know what to expect with this. I assumed that this kind of system was going to be very technical. Like, well, you have this lumbar and sacral thing, and this weight goes here, and this muscle goes here. And it's, there's a funny moment where at one point she's like, stop. <laughs> stop. Stop thinking technically. Just turn that side of your brain off, which is kind of ironic considering what we do here at Cracking the Code, right? But that is, it, it, it's a technically minded system. I think the instructor, the, the expert, knows this stuff. But they're trying to impart that in a very physical way that you can learn from and remember. So it's an art form, and it's a thing you go back to do multiple times, like learning. It's, it's a skill that you learn. You get better at it over time in a very visceral kind of functional way. So this was very cool to see. Juilliard has apparently integrated this into their curriculum and has, been, has done this for decades, since like the early 80s. This has been a core part of their system. It started in the acting school and then moved out into the music school, and now it's everywhere. And she's been with them for a couple decades. It's fantastically interesting insight into how one of the best music schools in the world addresses this very important issue of, of playing in a graceful way. So tons of awesome stuff coming up. Um, these are just a few things off the top of my head. But head on over to troygrady.com forward slash mechanics if you want to see some more clips of these things. And we will, of course, put up more stuff as time goes on. And as always, thanks so much for watching Cracking the Code.